oh, we were here uh, quite a while ago, and they've said, Wes, what can you do to reduce our energy consumption? And I've given them a list, and we've been through and done it. So if we want to have a bit of a walk through the house, um, we'll show you some of the things we've done. Okay, so what you can see here on the switchboard is we've had a solar system installed. At the top here, we've got what's known as a transponder, and this is linked in with a, uh, an energy meter called a Watts On, and that simply tells the customers what's on in their house. Here we've got an old period light fitting. It suits the house, it's 1930s, but yep, it's got a compact fluoro in there. You can still have old light fittings with new technology. Again, an energy saver type globe on a dimmer, and bang, we're saving watts. These compact fluoros um, can be installed in nearly every light fitting. All right, well, let's move through into the hub of the house where we've got the kitchen and a meals area. They said, well, what about in the kitchen here? We've got three globes. Well, what we did was we reduced them from 50 watts per light fitting down to 20. It's an instant saving. You're saving greenhouse gases and you're saving money. So this is the device we put in for the customer. It's known as a Watts On. And what it does, it gives us instantaneous readings of electricity consumption within the house. So at the moment you can see we've got a standby power of around about 405 watts. And just to give you an idea of how quickly that can be reflected in the decrease or increase in consumption, I'm sure the customer won't mind if we turn on the, uh, the oven here. We'll put it on full. And let's just see what happens to the watts on. Okay, you can see the consumption has gone up considerably. We're now drawing 2,400 or 75 watts. Of course, we've all got to cook, but we do what we can to get the power consumption down. It's now gone down to more of a purple hue. So it means we're a bit more on target, but I'd really like to see it down to a standby power of, you know, Preferably less than 50 watts would be really good, but that's pretty hard to achieve in most households because you've got all your little, what we call wall warts or little power adapters here. And you know, they just suck power, you know. Let's just say, for example, this is a mobile phone charger. Even if the person hasn't got their phone connected to it, but it's on at the power point, it's drawing three watts. And they're paying for that three watts. And out at La Trobe Valley there, your lawn is generating out CO2 to power this device. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through the various fields that are available for the client to look at. First one is power and use. So what are we consuming right here, right now? We're consuming 443 watts. That's a fair bit of electricity. We'll go to the next field. Okay, that dollar value there is worked out on if that consumption level in the previous field, say 530 watts, was on for the whole year, this is what's going to cost you. Okay, remembering also when carbon gets, the carbon tax gets introduced, you might be paying up to $30 a tonne. So you've got to put that on top of your, your electricity bill as well. The next field we're going to have a look at is generated power. This place has got a solar system installed, a one kilowatt system. At the moment, we've got a typically you know, cloudy day, um, it's generating 138 watts. So what we can do with the watts on is we can minus 136 watts from our initial figure, which was around 500 or 530, and it'll give us our net power use. So we're down to around about 304. So you can see a direct benefit there of the customer having the solar system installed. Okay, so as part of the Global Green Electrician Audit that's been conducted, we've notified that the customer can do something about the external glazing. And what that involves is installing a film on the inside of the windows. So in summer, the warm um, air due to the ambient temperature is gonna be limited to coming inside, which means the air conditioning is gonna be running less. And vice versa in winter, the warm air that's generated inside is not being lost through the, uh, the windows. So let's try and get these uh, air conditioners running less or not at all um, by using some good passive solar design techniques, um, external blinds, uh, wind breaks, um, even uh, some trees provide a bit of shade and things like that. Um, by opening up the meter panel, and we've got a what's known as a cogeneration meter, 
which measures your electricity generation and your electricity consumption. So the house has consumed 5,628 kilowatts and the house has generated 1,431. So it's around about a quarter of the house's electricity consumption. Okay, moving over to the inverter, which is what converts the DC electricity that the solar modules produce to AC, which feeds back into the grid. Uh, if we open up the informative display there, it can tell us exactly how much power the customer's house is generating. At the moment, it's saying that the unit uh, on the roof is generating 242 watts. What we'll do is we'll cycle through. What we can see is since this unit's been running, uh, it's generated 1.629 megawatts of electricity. It's generated $244 worth of electricity. It saved 961 kilograms of CO2 or carbon dioxide and also goes through the various fields of um, panel temperature, ambient temperature, and uh, there's lots of other fancy things on there. But most people are interested in how much carbon dioxide they've saved. Well, it's a one kilowatt system. Um, the customer wanted to size up a system that would suit the, uh, the load of their house. Um, it certainly doesn't cover all of their consumption, but it covers at least a third. Um, it's good quality product, um, installed by an accredited person. Um, the modules last for a long, long time. There's not really a lot of maintenance. Um, it's rained today, so they're nice and clean. Um, yeah, it's just a great benefit. Great benefit to the environment, to the customer. Um, the customer's got small children. Uh, it's north facing, uh, which is the best position for uh, solar modules to be installed. Um, the roof pitch is around about 28 degrees, which is really good. Um, we like to have them installed uh, at about that angle. Um, you know, and this roof also lends itself to solar hot water as well. We've got a bit of room here, um, either to the uh, right hand side of the solar array or directly in front of it. We can, we can put a solar hot water system in as well. So um, that's the whole point of getting an audit done by Global Green Electrician. It identifies key points where we can reduce consumption, um, reduce the, the customer's carbon footprint and provide some jobs for electricians out there.